Hello, Hello. and welcome back to the Beyond Condition podcast, Shelley. So we've had you on before, and it's great to have you back in to talk about deloads. Yes. As suggested by you, and like I agreed, you know, it's something that I don't think that many people talk about, and also, unfortunately, a lot of bodybuilders avoid the deload because it is tough. Yes. <laughs> Mainly I always mentally. think it's more mentally tough. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, it's it's a topic where I think, why do we do it? <laughs> and do, do others understand why they do it? That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and also there's, I know lots of people that program deloads and probably a good way to start off is, you know, there's so many different opinions as to whether you should program a deload or whether you should wait till you need one. I don't know what your thoughts are, girls. Um, my thoughts is I don't think you should program one in. Like, why would you deload if you feel great? Mm-hmm. That's my question. Um, I, I have never actually done a deload. Now, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I have taken a rest or an extra rest day mm-hmm. if need be. But I haven't been like, oh, OK, I'm just going to reduce the weight because yeah, I want to. And it says I need to deload. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, because it is, I mean, in the back of my mind, sometimes I'm thinking it can be a good idea to have a, if you're working with a client and say, you know, they're going into a new program and you can maybe put in their program that if it's appropriate, we can review where you're at and look at a deload. But it's hard to know when that's going to need to be needed, isn't it? Exactly. So let's say someone did came to me and they said they felt tired or you know life has changed then we can look at it and be like okay maybe we should revise your program Mm. I wouldn't be like oh you need to decrease your weights you know there's some very drastic things I see happening and I'm like why when you've worked your way up to that to that peak why do you want to do that when you can easily take an extra rest day or maybe change the way you're exercising Mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that with working with people yeah I I I agree. I mean, I almost kind of preempt a deload based on learning the particular individual. So you can almost see um, over the course of, say, it's an eight week or 12 week block, if they're going all out at sort of an eight to 10 RP scale, if you like, if we take that in every single session, at some point, the central nervous system is going to give you a little bit of a wake up call. And I think everyone is is very different some people can go and go and go and go and exactly as you've said Shelley what's the point in putting the deload in there if actually their their, their numbers are going up they're on a good amount of food their performance is really good their recovery is really good um but even that person at some point is going to reach a ceiling where a little bit of a pullback not necessarily a full take a full seven days off but you know my deloads look like continue doing the same sessions at 50% and I'll drop the sets from maybe three or four sets down to two and the rep range goes up to say 10, yeah. but we're, we're using a lower load. So it's taking everything down 50% and just still getting blood in the tissue, but not just completely stopping training. Cause that would be, de- well, it would be detrimental to where they are. So mm. taking a little foot off the gas and giving them a breather which helps with so many different things, but it's knowing when that is and it's a different set point for everyone. Yes, exactly. That's why I think, because I hear that a lot will just program it in. And Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things, as you said, it's individual basis. Mm -hmm. And it also depends on what they're doing. You know, I know that not every client I'm doing or working with um, does bodybuilding. (laughs) So again, it depends on their lifestyle and what they're working towards. Um, Yeah. And as for the, it depends on how they're feeling as well. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say I know someone is feeling tired. Of course, I'm going to say, you know, you can take a bit of rest or we can look at, as what you said, decreasing the load. But I wouldn't call it necessarily a deload, what yeah. I see, you know. <laughs> you I mean, so there's opportunities where I've certainly done in the past when I've maybe gone on holiday and the gym equipment isn't going to be that good. So I sometimes almost program my holiday so that I can use that as like a week where I'll focus more on like steps and expenditure and maybe activities rather than weight-based training for like a week. And then you can come back, 
you feel refreshed in the mind and then you can also get that hunger back to go straight back into your training plan and that can sometimes be a sort of indirect way of having almost a deload Mm -hmm. yeah I I agree with that I think as well it's that there's a fine balance with deloads because I have a lot of I've had a lot of clients that have come on board with me and when I sort of mention the term you know we need to take a sort of a back off week or a deload um it's what's a deload you know what is that I've never taken one of those before and the general feedback I get from some of my clients with the first or second deload is not willingness to go into it but realizing when they've had it how much they needed that Mm -hmm. Um, and then the sudden realization that actually going back in and looking at the result of their performance in the week post a back off week they've been able to actually hit that number they've been stuck on for quite a long time or they've been able to kind of get their head in the gear for that big big lift that we've been trying to that you know maybe I've been putting in as a target for the last eight week block and just the refreshed mindset can be really beneficial knowing that they've taken that little bit of a rest so it's like everything with fitness and bodybuilding there's like a psychological impact as well as a physical one um and yeah i've seen seen really positive effects with putting them in when they're needed um and perhaps the client doesn't realize they do but once they've taken it they feel so much better coming back into the next part of their phase of training whatever that looks like Mm. like you say there if you're training someone for potentially a, a lift so if you're working for, with someone that wasn't maybe doing bodybuilding yeah then again there's potential for that to be needed more if you know say they're training for a strength training program mm-hmm. for an event say a powerlifting or something like that there's so many complexities to it because if you look around bodybuilding and other sports Delos may be more appropriate to potentially program in if you were going to compete or something like this yeah well yes yeah so I think like let's say for me I do the same what you did I program in like my rest mm. sort of period around mm. holidays for example so Christmas I did take a good week off mm. um but I did it a different way whereas I took a week off yeah and I didn't decrease anything I didn't go by 50% or anything I just took that week off but that's because I competed and I was in prep for a very long time so Mm -hmm. again it also depends on the person um but what I see is when something is completely programmed in and then it's out there in the media and then you know it gets fixated in someone's head that they must take a deload and I'm like but you're doing so well why Mm -hmm. are you taking it now you don't seem tired you know again it's um on the basis of the client but it's like why do it when you don't need it but obviously when you do need it I think it's really good and as you said um it's refreshing and you do hit numbers even myself when I took that week off I came back to the gym you know mm-hmm. ready to go and I ended up yeah hitting pbs yeah um, I mean I know. went straight back in I didn't go like you know I did it how I felt so I thought okay if I can hit I don't know 160 on a squat I'm going to hit 160 on the score. I'm not going to be like, oh, because I've come back from this rest, I'm just going to keep on my deload, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, structuring it and, you know, when you liaise with your clients and whatever and saying it's yeah. a back off week, sometimes even that can be easier to handle from the athlete's point of view because they can maybe go to the gym and get like a pump and like you say, Steph, do more reps and things like this. So actually they don't feel like oh God, I've got a deload and I'm not doing anything and go into that like, oh my God, you know, if they do need some sort of deload, structuring it around being able to get a pump and still train is a really good way because we are creatures of habit like that, aren't we? And for a lot of us, mentally, it's our church, you know, it's it's our religion. (laughs) Yeah, I think as well, like when you, when you schedule your deload, so it's more of a back off and not just completely stopping, um, they might, they'll, they'll go into the gym. So I've got one client at the moment who's just come off a deload, so it's quite relevant. Um, and she had never really done the type of pump work, the higher rep, um, lighter weight, just feeling the connection, not really focusing on just the lift, the lift, the lift and progression, you know, progressing on her logbook. And she was absolutely buzzing in that environment, just 
feeling really, really full of blood, feeling good, feeling, you know, she's obviously, she's just started her prep as well. So she's starting to see herself come in. And it was a, it was a really nice way she explained it to me, which was, she was more focused on internally lifting for her and feeling that kind of connection rather than the external sort of, I have to do this for validation that I'm progressing in my lifts. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was quite nice because we, we are so focused, particularly with social media, et cetera, on, on bettering ourselves in every way all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and we forget that there's other methods of training and it doesn't always have to be heavy lifting that can really make us feel good and enjoy it. And her sessions were only 30 minutes this week of just high repetitions and pump work. And she's come out of her deload into a fresh week buzzing, absolutely buzzing. So um, I think it has it has different different things for different people some people hit their deload and just literally don't want to see a gym for a week you know some people yeah. want to get in there and just because they can't be away from it because the mental dis- t- t- detachment is too much um yeah so it's, it's coming back to the individuality thing and also how it also depends on how you program it as well because this this is, you said about the pump so i actually do a mixture of volume and then a mixture of hitting i guess numbers if you call it yeah um, but I mainly start out just doing volume to be fair, just to get that mind muscle connection. Hmm. Um, and I don't fixate on actually hitting, let's say a PB. Um, my aim yeah. is always, once I go up a weight, I want to always get to the 20 reps before I move on, but that's a whole <laughs> different thing. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> that's how, that's how I work. <laughs> it's funny how we that's get, why you have yeah. such killer boulders. <laughs> That's why Shelly is fire. <laughs> she's, she's basically doing GBT, like German bone training for a deload for her life. She's just on the volume. That's what that's that's the magic. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, that's basically what I do. So I again, maybe I'm doing a what's it called? A I'm consciously deloading already mm. because I'm yeah. you know staying on a weight and then making sure I hit that weight completely before I move on, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Constantly I mean, being like, oh, I need to get to this number now, you know, and feeling that if I don't, then I'm not progressing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a really nice way to look at it, like going for something like 20 reps, because it, it is a lot, but it's almost like we've touched on before, Steph and I, about earning the right to do certain things. And yeah, you know, it's I we get it because that's sort of how we operate and a lot of bodybuilders would understand that you want to be able to get say it's a squat you want to get the depth you want to get the reps you want to execute properly rather than just you know hit a pb and then up the weight and your your form and everything just goes off and you're not really earning that right to then potentially progress in a weight yes and it's it is a good i feel like it's a good way to look at it but also you need to take it with a bit of an open mind as well because you're not always going to progress every single session no that's mm-hmm. another thing as well I think a lot of fixated with progressing every session and that they need to make sure they hit this PB and again that cause that could cause injuries you know your forms off so that's why I, I put that number in because I want to make sure that when I go to my next lift I've got the strength behind me I'm not forcing mm-hmm. it and that when I do hit the other weight, I should hit it because I can do 20 on the weight below. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, we've mentioned already about fatigue and not being able to recover properly as such being a sign of a deload. Is there anything else that'd be useful for our listeners to sort of understand when a deload may be appropriate? I think it's one of those things where you need to be obviously talking to your coach um Mm -hmm. about it so when you're doing your check-ins um I do check-ins you do check-ins obviously give as much information as you can about your week will help because then that way we can look at it um from a coach's perspective and be like oh okay it looks like you probably do need a little bit of a deload or rest you know Mm -hmm. and program it in that way rather than it being like oh um what's a deload apparently I have to take in it's like but you just started why why are you deloading you know (laughs) so when when to find when to know when it's appropriate I think it's one of those things where you talk with your coach and you can decide when that is or you can program in where it you know like a holiday let's say you know that you just come off a competition and you know Christmas coming up for example 
and um, you can be like well take you know take that week off if that's going to help or if you need to go to the gym because some people can't stop for a week I know that for a fact I found it very hard this time to stop for a week but I decided that that needed to be done because of the year I'm about to have which is probably the oh most grueling year of my life so yeah. um, I actually took a week off and I, I normally don't do that um, I, what I'll do is I'll factor in extra rest days, if that makes sense. Um, and at one point I did drop from working out six days a week. I say working out because I wasn't just doing weights. I was doing gymnastics as well. Mm. So working out three to four days a week. So I suppose that's another way of deloading as well. Um, mm -hmm. So going out, max effort, but more rest. Um, mm -hmm. And another way I did as well is I had naps, but some can't factor that one in as well. It's so instead of me, enough, yeah, yeah. So instead of me stopping completely again or um, taking extra rest, because at the time it wasn't applicable, mm -hmm. I decided that I'll factor in, you know, naps, making sure I went to bed on time, which sometimes can be difficult when you have a family and life. Um, mm -hmm. But there's different ways of doing it, and I think it's one of those things. It needs to be understood that it needs to be done when it's appropriate and when it's at a good time to do it. There's no point in doing it because the media says we have to do it mm. and we need to program yeah. it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely find when I'm getting to the point where I maybe need to take a step back, things like my legs get really restless. Yeah. I have real trouble sleeping. I mean, my sleep's not been very good since embarking on the journey of a bodybuilder yeah. anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> it's even more so. And also sometimes my appetite is actually suppressed rather than yeah. want more, but... I become like really, you know, I just eat my meals because I need to rather than, you know, getting that, oh, I'm looking forward to what I'm going to eat next and what have you. And they're some of the signs that I pick up myself. Have you noticed that in yourself, Steph? Yeah, I was going to say you've hit the nail on the head. Like a couple of, a few warning signs for me or signs that a, a client might be needing a deload is exactly that appetite suppression perhaps you know poor recent poor nutrition adherence to diet maybe struggling to eat all the food sleep might be poor um the key ones are of course reduced response to the training so their performance might be lower their endurance might be you know they might be struggling with depending on obviously what the goal is but, but if they're doing anything endurance based they might be lagging in their time um their muscle stamina is not so good their recovery rate is poorer you know, these are these are kind of key signs that if it's and if they're actually expressing it. And I, this is why check ins and coaching is so important, because you literally get the live feedback from the client and you can see it in a check in when a, when a client is really struggling with. I don't know why my lifts are so poor this week. It's I've been really finding that I've been struggling that over the last few weeks. I'm not sleeping. My nutrition is, you know, not been as great. You can start to hear those signs. And that is a pretty good indicator for sure that something's not quite what I'd call optimal or balanced and that's a good chance to take a, a step back and see what's going on there mm, yeah do you find the same Kelly with your client um yes yeah, so I I ask them to give me a a thorough um update on their week um you know not go mm -hmm. completely to town but you know give the relevant information um because that way yeah again you can tell you can also tell in pictures if someone looks tired you know yeah or yeah. um just by talking to them let's say they send your voice no or any any clues like that I know that you know something needs to change or be amended I should say um mm -hmm. and that way that's why I think obviously yeah, as you said coaching is so important because you can then just update that straight away and hopefully you know the next week will then be better um mm -hmm. and if it's not we can then you know talk about it and then make sure that it's better for the future obviously um because yeah, yeah recovery is so so important um oh. we are we are using you know all our joints when we when we especially in bodybuilding um mm -hmm. and the last thing we want is to get so tired that we crash um so obviously we need to make sure that that doesn't happen mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, sure. when it comes to, you know, recovery, me and Tom spoke about this last week on the pod. It's, well, I'm not going to try and blanket term, but a lot of female athletes, we get very invested in like, you know, in an off season, potentially doing too much cardio because we're married to the idea of learning the calories and you're on that almost hamster wheel of, I need to do more expenditure all the time. 
then you risk injury, you also risk your strength training becoming detrimental. And then when you go into a prep, you haven't got many tools in the toolbox because you're already doing cardio five or six times a week. And yeah. all these other things that we sort of almost marry ourselves to because we feel like we have to keep doing, we have to keep doing. And I'm sure we've all been there where you come off the back of a show and the next day you're in the gym doing cardio. <laughs> yes, I think I've, well, actually, um, I wouldn't say cardio, but um, but yes, I've gone, I've gone straight back in and be like, yeah, I'm going to just carry on and normal and think, hold on a sec, I've just done a show. <laughs> Like literally, yeah. you're on stage 12 hours previous and then suddenly you're in the gym doing whatever it is getting a pump and what have you and yeah. I definitely feel like sometimes for me it's more that I'm like you know especially if you've like won a show or you've achieved a milestone you want to like go and see your physique while you're lean you're thinking oh my god I've won the show and the rational mind isn't there so again coming back to coaching it's so important to have that second mm -hmm. eye to almost look after you post show as well yeah to bring you back home basically um because obviously you can't see what you're seeing especially like when you finish a show I always feel so excited um, <laughs> you know to get back in the gym no matter like what placings I've had I just feel excited you know and on to the next goal but that's how I am in terms of goals I always have to set a goal and um, yeah. so I have many goals set so I obviously know that once I come off the back of a show I have another goal so I'm like oh let's go to the gym the next day but you know sometimes it's not good um so it's yeah it's good to have a pair of eyes to be like no don't go don't do that you can go on Tuesday for example but <laughs> yeah. maybe not rush one back day, day. <laughs> yeah because Steph yeah. I know that we've mentioned this quite a few times on the pod where you take if you've done a show and you're not going to be competing for a while or what have you mm -hmm. you'll take an extended period of rest because your preps are you know maybe 40 weeks as, yeah. you know as a natural competitor you're needing to do a really nice long prep and also because figure it is you know next level shredded isn't it let's face it yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it is yeah I mean it is it is and it's um for us naturals we just have to get that, that little bit of extra time which can be very very difficult on on the body there by 40 42 weeks but I mean I have a recovery month it's a full month post show I've got like, quite a lot of my slightly higher level athletes do the same um and that it comprises of really a rehabilitation month it's stretching it's yoga it's lots of sports massage it's realigning it's taking your mind down from the highs of the competition and the goal being you know everything and all yeah. to exploring life a little bit and reconnecting with people around you and just easing back into kind of a, a realistic mindset for the next phase whatever that looks like um and if that's the, it does there's a lot of work to be done there because if you go back I mean we've said this before but if you go back into the gym straight off the bat and you're off to try and hit your 150 or 160 deadlift PB mm. um on a 42 or less or even more length prep and your connective tissues will just say no and mm. you're in a really really vulnerable place for injury your yeah. hormones are not quite back where they need to be you've not got enough fat around your joints you're just you, you know you're in a place where things could go very wrong very quickly if you're not ready and getting yourself back to an optimal state quite fast so there is all that to consider um but I think as well it's when we were just talking about there the deal I find that a lot of people feel like taking time away from the gym doing a deload or just even a rest day is a sign of failure or weakness I don't know if you guys have experienced this I've come across um, that a lot yeah yeah <laughs> and having to having to kind of figure out where that comes from from a mindset point of view is really interesting because it most of the time comes down to a lack of confidence in actually the progression of where they're at now um so I, I guess if anyone's listening and they think oh I need to take a day off or I need to take a week off do it for your health and for the progression don't be scared of it yeah that's the, the key thing and maybe yeah. if you've got yeah. alternatives like you just said about mentioning yoga and things like this like there is other things available in the world <laughs> you yes. know? Like, even like you could go for like a hike or something you know you still, yeah. still strenuous in a different way 
it's just away from the gym and sometimes we need to just reconnect with the world don't we you know like yeah family friends stuff like that everything becomes very tunnel vision especially in a prep like you're just this prep bot and (laughs) it's like you don't come up for air and then you know unfortunately relationships and stuff can be a little bit tricky during a prep so it's nice to just go should we go for a walk today (laughs) yeah yeah I think doing different things is good I mean I okay obviously I I do gymnastics and but I take a time sometimes and just explore different sports and Mm. I, I feel like I'm still achieving you know I'm doing something different um it doesn't necessarily have to be I have to go to the gym and lift weights um I did that in lockdown actually I prepped a lot on doing gymnastics and in the park which got me super conditioned never yeah. never thought that would happen but it did <laughs> so you know you can't you don't just have to just lift weights um you can explore other yeah. ideas and say oh I've always wanted to try this and you're still exercising you know hmm. um, yeah you still get the stimulation can't you exactly you can still get a pump as well surprisingly you can still feel sore all of those things that you know that you want um to feel satisfied you can still get that from doing something and as you said with others in your family as well so you know my daughter does gymnastics so I I might take a day not necessarily do weights and just go tumbling with her go trampolining um which is which is very strenuous and a lot of cardio (laughs) so (laughs) you know different way of looking at it (laughs) you're quite lucky aren't you because you and Andrew have competed in the past together and that's obviously your partner so when you then go into your month replenishment sort of stage you can yeah. do that together so you can reconnect and then you can attack the next phase together yeah yeah and we are really lucky in that sense um it's it's good having somebody I mean we've said this as well but it's so important if you've got somebody in your family or a friend or somebody who understands what you're doing that period after prep to give attention to that side of your life that might have not saying it's been at a detriment, but certainly probably not had the same focus and attention as it usually has, um, is then where you can just have some fun and remember like that, that needs that needs as much focus and, and work on it as well as everything else. So yeah, that's a good time to do it for sure. Mm, replenish the mind. So other than that, is there anything else you think would be useful for our listeners to get involved with or you know anything we can end on a high with? I, I have one one thing just on because I know we've explored deloads in various settings, but we haven't pinpointed taking a deload week in the middle of a prep, or perhaps you're you're not like too, you're not too far away from your show day. Um, and so I know some coaches who do this, some coaches who don't. Um, I do because I think you're actually putting your body, you're pushing your body to its limit at certain phases in the prep. Um, and it was just a note on that to say that. If you're thinking, oh, I'm in a prep and, and I, is this something I need to do or not? Explore that question with your coach and find out whether it's a protocol that they use or not. Um, but be really open when you're maybe ex- experiencing high levels of fatigue and muscle soreness. That's what I would say, because it's at that point where I might take a few days back off during a prep and it's not a negative thing at all. It just helps them actually go for longer. Um, so that was just something I wanted to add in there. Well, yeah. Oh no, I think I actually think that's very, very important. Um, in fact, I do do that method in terms of, especially when I'm mixing things. So yeah, before I'm about to come to a competition, I can't possibly, um, especially in a deficit, think about gymnastics and weight training to a high intensity. Mm. It's not going to happen. I'm going to crash. Um, yeah. So it's one of those things where again as you said, go and discuss with your coach and think, how, how can I best handle this so that I can get to the stage and feel, you know, feel good about what I'm doing? Um, yeah. mm-hmm. And for example, I didn't do in my last week because in my previous weeks when I was actually in a surplus, I made sure that I had my moves down in gymnastics. I didn't actually, apart from market through, I didn't somersault, I didn't do anything like that. I literally, and I went to the gym and did volume. Mm, yeah. I didn't go for PBs um because I just wanted to make sure I had all my strength I didn't go into the competition sore you know (laughs) and with injuries because I decided to throw these crazy somersaults before before (laughs) the comp so I'll say having a good plan um 
structured around your life is so important and it's something you should discuss before you go into um any sort of prep or even mm. even in life mm. Mm -hmm. that's a really good way to approach it actually because some people dive into a prep and they don't even consider that there's some big things potentially coming up that aren't mm. on the bodybuilding side of things and then it's that risk of injury and that vulnerability in a prep as you get deeper and deeper that thinking of something like taking your somersaults out that are going to be more high in impact and you know potentially a lot more expenditure is a really good way to look at it isn't it yeah mm. 100%. And I love that comment you made as well about, you know, you're in it for the long run in a prep, you don't want to burn out too quickly and then produce a really fatigued, tired look on stage. And all of these things are components of it, the recovery and the understanding how to prolong a healthy looking physique throughout are vital. Um, and yeah, in order to get to that finish line, you mm -hmm. need to, you need to have that that time where you're recovering in between otherwise you'll just be frazzled <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah and easy, I like the fact you touched on rehab rehabilitation as well um yeah. and we didn't go too much in depth into that but I I find that so important I in fact I actually do one to two sessions per week um 12 weeks out yeah before really. comp. um deep stretching deep tissue massaging the whole lot goes in contrast bathing Oh, oh nice. um, it's, it's so important and it doesn't just stop there it has to be done post as well because yes. remember you're going on stage and you are absolutely hammered by the time you get there oh, um okay. so you could do all this before to prepare for it but I do believe you need to do it after to make sure that you fully recover and that you're able to then move on to the next goal let's say injury free you know without niggles that's the time to sort anything out if anything happens obviously um post show as well it's trying to keep the lid on the excitement isn't it because <laughs> all the self-care things i don't know about you guys but i'm like when i am so excited and i've had a really good show and what have you i'm like oh, i want to go and do stuff and da -da -da. i haven't got time for my yoga today because there's so many good things to do and <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah become our own worst enemy don't we exactly yeah you just want to do everything isn't it because you're just so excited yeah. But yeah, you have to yeah, you have to sit back and think. Okay, now I want to <laughs> I want to do this for a long you know long haul. So I need mm -hmm. to take it you know take it easy and then just ease your way back in and make sure that you cover all the other points, not just um hitting those PBs and mm -hmm. you know tiring yeah. yourself out <laughs> to the point where then you need to then you really need to do take a deload um <laughs> a complete one so <laughs> it's definitely so Shelley are you at the moment are you taking on coaching clients where are you at with that um yes I am so before I was doing more gymnastics coaching so I was doing part part um I've now switched that to more of a 75 25 so I am taking on more clients um Cool. I'm also, which I have a couple of people I'm doing now, doing fitness um, choreography as oh. well, um, as well oh. as I am launching an online gymnastics uh, course oh. as well. Um, so that should be good. Um, it also covers stretching because I do believe even if you don't want to do gymnastics per se, I think stretching is so important. Um, and I've been told that due to my stretching and able to connect with my muscles I should say um, I'm able to actually lift maybe heavier um, because of that because I have that you know that range so mm -hmm. I do believe um, combining the two could be a good thing so you don't necessarily have to do like you know high level skills or anything but the stretching component around it um, even like yoga is mm -hmm. is good for bodybuilding so um, that's the way I'm going so I'm trying to merge the two together yeah, I, I think it's definitely, it's definitely the way the fitness industry, well, particularly bodybuilding is going, there's much more research and more coaches utilising the things like yoga and stretching mm -hmm. within the weight training programme and potentially the cardio. Yeah. So for you, I'd imagine it's going to be a really good way to hit 2022. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So if I, your, if I put your Instagram name in the description of this episode, are you happy for people to DM you or, or whatever if they wanted a bit more information? Yes, they can. They can um, D DM me. Um, and then from there, we can sort our way of corresponding. Um, so, so, yeah. 
um, they can, it depends on which way they want to go. Again, we can discuss that because I have some who do a combination of gymnastics and bodybuilding. So I can program around that too. Mm. Um, and there's some obviously who just do straight bodybuilding, some who do straight gymnastics, or we can even, as you said, combine more stretching elements into it as well. So yeah, just have fun with it. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> gymnastics in a sense is quite a nice niche market for you but also being able to potentially work with gymnasts that wanted to go into bodybuilding or vice versa it's quite a cool uh way for you to offer different things within our industry ah yes thank you <laughs> if i get any gymnasts coming through they'll be heading your way <laughs> hello yay <laughs> so thanks again for your time shelly it's awesome to just touch base and you know also get a bit of an update into what you're doing so i appreciate it a lot yeah, yes, thank well, you thank very you. much. You're welcome. Yeah, I always appreciate you. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. And hopefully, obviously, you'll see me again. Yeah, of course. There's so many things, even touching on little things in today's episode, mm -hmm. that we can just evolve in the future. So I will look forward to it. I'm sure you will, Steph. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. It's great to have just different perspectives on everything. So, yeah, thank you so much again, Shelley, for coming on. You're welcome. And thank you for having me again. <laughs> so. Thank you, Until girls. We will see you soon. Yes. <laughs> On the next one. <laughs> see you later, guys.